Robbins with End Time Ministries. Thank you for joining me on this edition of End of the Age. The kingdom of the Antichrist prophesied 2,000 years ago is going to be a socialistic, communistic, one world governing body and we're seeing that established as we speak. Revelation 13, 1 through 8 describes the end time world government and its ruler as the beast along with the spiritual being from which they derive their power. And it's not God. Our understanding of this prophecy begins in the book of Daniel. In Daniel 7, Daniel was given a vision of four separate beasts. They represented kingdoms or nations that would exist at the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ. The four beasts described in Daniel 7, 4 through 7, and the modern nations that they symbolize, and this is very critical. This is almost Bible prophecy 101. If you don't get this right, it's impossible to understand the world government and the, the current European um, Union, the revived Holy Roman Empire, and what all that symbolizes. You've got to get Daniel 7, 4 through 7 right. So, number one, there's a lion with eagle's wings. That represents the modern nations of Great Britain and the United States. A bear symbolizing Russia. A four-headed leopard, Germany. And then there's a ten-horned beast, which is the current reborn Holy Roman Empire or the European Union. So in Revelation 13, 1 through 2, John uses the same symbols of nations to describe the end time world government. In John's account, the four separate nations of Daniel 7 federalize into one large global governing body. And the interpretation would go something like this. Um, John said, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns. So imagine. And that upon its horns symbolizing the European Union, were ten crowns. Upon its heads the name of blasphemy. And this beast, which John was seeing, was like unto a leopard. So we know the nation of Germany will be involved. Feet as the feet of the bear, Russia. Mouth as the mouth of the lion, Great Britain. And the dragon, or Satan, gave him his seat, power, and great authority. So the seven-headed, ten-horned beast is symbolic of the world government that is currently being established. Now, this probably is going to be a two-part series here. 
because I'm, I want to make sure you get the prophecy and then we'll go into the Council for Inclusive Capitalism and everything else that's going on, the Build Back Better and the Great Reset and everything because I'm telling you, all of them are going out and they are promoting, advocating for all of the edicts of the world government, this socialistic one world governing body, which is the United Nations, the seat of world government in the earth today. All of these entities are doing the bidding of that, and I'm going to prove all that. So the ruler of the end time world government, it's mentioned many times in scripture, most of you already know, he's the Antichrist. He's not on the scene yet, but he will be before very long but he will usurp authority over an already fully functioning world governing body that is being established right now. And so I want to focus on Revelation 13 here. Revelation 13, 5 through 8, provides specific characteristics of the leader of this world governing body. First, Revelation 13, 5, the Bible says, There was given, given unto him a mouth speaking great things. Most of these, or I should say all of these, correlate with Daniel 7. A mouth speaking great things. Revelation 13, 7. It was given unto him to make war with the saints. Um, power was given to him. Revelation 13, 5. Power was given to him to continue 42 months. That final three and one half years of great tribulation. Revelation 13, 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. The Bible tells us many times that he blasphemes God. And so from these passages and others, there are many others actually, there's over uh, 50 prophecies about the, just the Antichrist alone in Scripture. So from these passages and others, it's clear to see that the ruler of the world, the end time world government, the beast mentioned in Revelation here, is the exact same person as the little horn, which I'm not going to go into, but the little horn found in Daniel 7, and of course, that correlates perfectly with Revelation. So he is the Antichrist. Of the 50 prophecies, because there are 50 plus prophecies, we're going to know who the Antichrist is beyond a shadow of a doubt. There will come a day when I can come to you on air and say, this individual is the guy. And so I won't take time to explain all of the, the reborn Holy Roman Empire and the Antichrist, the false prophet and everything. You can get an in-depth understanding of that prophecy. Now, who's the dragon? Who's, who is the spiritual entity that, that is the driver, the mastermind behind the Antichrist? Well, if you reference the end time world government and its ruler, the Antichrist, Revelation 13, 2 states, the dragon give it its seat, power, and its great authority. There are two verses of Scripture where, which define the dragon. It's not the nation of China. In Scripture, in Bible prophecy, Revelation 12, 9 states, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world and was cast into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And then in Revelation 20, verse 2, the Bible says, And the angel lay, laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. So the dragon, this is very important, who is the mastermind behind the end time socialistic world government is Satan himself. And so if you want to know who, who's the mastermind, who's, who's the driver, who's the principal driver behind all of this, it's always been Satan's mindset to have a, a global governing empire that could thwart the kingdom of Jesus Christ. It's a spiritual battle, Satan fighting against Jesus. Now, how do we know the kingdom of the Antichrist it will be socialistic. Well, it's a red kingdom. Just like any other topic in the Bible, when we're seeking a better understanding of the interpretation of prophecy, we've got to look at all the scriptures devoted to that subject, right? It, you remember from Revelation 13, 1 through 8, the seven-headed, ten-horned beast symbolizes the end-time world government of the Antichrist. Revelation 17, 3 
it also mentions that same seven-headed, ten-horned beast. But if you look closely at the verse, you will see a very important clue which allows us to further understand that prophecy. It says, So he carried me away into the spirit, into the wilderness, and I saw a woman, which is the false religious system in the end time, sit on a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. So in this prophecy, there's one word there, the scarlet color or red. It's of great significance. And this clue reveals the political ideology of the kingdom of the Antichrist. So, how do we know that? Well, a red horse, that's the clue. The book of Revelation has a skeletal structure of three groups of seven. It's got seven seals, seven trumpets, seven vials. The four horsemen are the first four seals of the seven seals. Revelation 6, verse 1 through 8, reveals four horses, a white horse, a red horse, a black horse, and a pale horse, along with several clues to help us identify them. So the question is, what are these colored horses referring to? Well, the answer to this question is found in another prophecy located in the Old Testament. It's Zechariah chapter 6, verse 1 through 8. Zechariah saw the same colored horses, but he saw them pulling chariots. And additionally, he, instead of a pale horse, Zechariah saw a grizzled and bay horse. So Zechariah chapter 6, verse 4 through 5, it tells us what these horses symbolize. He said, And I answered and said unto the angel that was talking with me, What are these, my Lord? The angel said unto him, these are the four spirits of, heaven, of the heavens which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. So this tells us that the four colored horses of Revelation 6 verses 1 through 8 symbolize four spirits. And these four spirits are the four main ideologies of mankind today. Um, so the, just for the sake of time... The, the four spirits are, the white horse is Catholicism. But again, the, the, the white horse is Catholicism. The red horse, the red spirit in the world today, communism, socialism. The black horse, capitalism. And the pale horse, Islamism. The, the word pale there should have been translated green, which is chloros. And the original Greek word, um, which would be translated chloros, which is green. So that's how we get Islamism, the green ideology, the green spirit in the world today. But I want to focus on the red horse for this lesson. Revelation 6, 3-4 states, And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And I went out, at, uh, and another horse came out, and it was red. So I want you to consider this. What spirit would represent a red horse? In the world today, of all the ideologies, the main spirits, a red horse. Well, there is an international spirit who influences what people believe, how they live, what they do. I mean, so the red spirit is, is communism. Think of red China, red Russia, red Romania, communistic countries. Um, communism, commonly associated with the color red, and communism was wide, has widespread influence over what people believe, what they value, what they love, what they fight for. Many people have died just for the ideology of communism. So in summation here, the end time world government of the Antichrist will be a socialistic, communistic, world governing body. Remember, the Bible says it's a seven-headed, ten-horned beast. That's the world government. And John said in Revelation 17, 3, it was a scarlet colored or a red beast. Very, very important here. The end time world governing body, John told us 2,000 years ago, it would be a socialistic or a communistic world government. 
Now, John wrote that prophecy while he was exiled on the Isle of Patmos in 95, 96 A.D. And here we see it coming to pass as we speak, folks. Now, now let's, I, I just want let, to, let's get into the ongoing fulfillment of this prophecy because um, I'm going to take you through some history and then I'm going to bring you up to what's going on today because it is unbelievable how far we are off into this. A lot of people said, well, you know, I, Dave, I don't know about that. Well, just get ready. So in 1917, the Bolshevik Revolution took over the Soviet Union and continued until World War II. In 1942, I want to show you how quickly this is happening. 1942, communism only ruled one country, the Soviet Union, only 6% of the world's population. However, by 1962, 20 years, communism ruled 50% of the world's population. At the end of World War II at Yalta, the Soviet Union was given control over all of Eastern Europe. They took control of Poland, Czechoslovakia, uh, Yugoslavia, Romania, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, the Baltic states, um, East Germany. And additionally, in 1949, communism swept through China and by 1962, half of the world's population was now under the iron heel of international communism. So it appeared as if communism was taking over the world, I mean, right? Henry Kissinger said at that time, the days of capitalism were possibly over. Well, if you look at what's going on now, you can see the communism and the socialistic ideology sweeping across. You say, well, I've had people tell me, oh, socialism has nothing to do with communism. Well, just give me a second and I'm going to, uh, I think you'll think a little differently here in just a moment because I'm going to prove to you that it absolutely does, especially in the minds of a communist. So think about what's going on in our world today. Think about the United Nations, the influence the United Nations has. And think about the ideology, the spirit behind the United Nations, the seat of world government in the earth today. It's a red spirit. The United Nations has always been socialistic. And of, so because of that, what kind of agenda do you think they're going to push? Well, of course, they will push a socialistic agenda. You say, well, hold on a minute. I just thought the United Nations was this great humanitarian organization that just feeds people after a tsunami or an earthquake or a hurricane and, you know, they've got peacekeeping forces around the world. The United Nations has always been socialistic. I mean, think about climate change, sustainable development goals, and all of the different agendas that they're pushing. They're all devoted to socialism, uh, working with the Economic Forum, on the Great Reset. Uh, you've heard Build Back Better. The list goes on forever. Every United Nations agenda and prop, all of their propaganda is devoted to implementing socialism and or, the anti, and or control. And this is going to be eventually the Antichrist socialistic kingdom. Now, in... 2021, 2022, most of the world is implementing socialism in their countries and the populace has no clue what is going on. It's like the, um, you've heard the story of the frog that was boiling in the water. You just keep turning up the heat a little bit at a time and the frog never knows what's happening until it's too late. So how do we know? Well, You've, it, they're not going to come right in and say, we, not everybody. I mean, some of them are saying, yeah, I'm a democratic socialist. But they're not going to come right in and say, we're going to implement socialism and that's how it's going to be and there's going to be a communist revolution and we're going to take over. It's not what they're going to do here in the United States and many other places. One of the, you've got to look at what they're trying to do. 
the, 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 uh, at the ground floor. Here's what we're trying to implement. And if it's socialism, you got to call it, you got you to call it what it is. So one of the major planks of socialism is wealth redistribution. Now, Many of you have heard about the Sustainable Development Goals over and over and over in the news. Every day, somebody's trying to implement the Sustainable Development Goals. Well, the Sustainable Development Goals were unanimously adopted by 193 member states of the United Nations. I want you to remember that statement right there. Unanimously adopted by 193 member states of the United Nations. Remember when I told you that Back in 1962, about 52% of the world was leaning towards or controlled by communism, socialism. Well, now, the Sustainable Development Goals, unanimously adopted by 193 member states of the United Nations, including the United States, on September 25th, 2015. It was under the Obama administration here. The goals make up the international community's 15-year, by 2030, socialistic blueprint of global governance for every person on the planet. You say, well, I can't believe the United Nations will be putting out an agenda that was socialistic. Why not? The United Nations has been socialistic from its inception, everybody. So the Agenda 2030, the, the Sustainable Development Goals, it's aptly named Transforming Our World. That's what they're trying to do. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. You notice, they don't say socialism there at all, right? But they say that the goals are a universal policy agenda designed to convert the nations of the world into a global community governed by the United Nations. That's what they're trying to do. And the agenda is compromised of 17 main goals accompanied by 169 focused targets designed to manage the planet. Now, I say socialistic because the plan includes the socialistic principle of wealth redistribution. And they, they actually state that the reduction of inequality will only be possible if wealth is shared and income inequality is addressed. I want to hold right there because I want to make sure you get that. Wealth redistribution is one of the main planks of socialism and they say that the sustainable development goals will not even be possible to implement unless income inequality is addressed and wealth is shared. So it's socialism. 